Choosing the right area to wholesale and flip houses can make all the difference in your success. On today's video, using a neighborhood in Indianapolis as a case study, I'm gonna show you exactly what to look for and how to find a good neighborhood to flip houses coming up. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's virtual wholesaling guide so you can flip houses online without leaving your home. Download it now at virtualwholesaleguide.com. If you're new here to this channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippingMastery.com and this channel is all about ways to help you make money wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. Hours online here in my 11,000... Since I do deals virtually all over the country, I am constantly looking for deals in different markets. I often spend hours online in my 11,000 square foot house looking at leads in brand new markets I've never seen before and then learning the neighborhoods by looking at homes for sale and homes that have sold. My goal is to really try to understand values of the homes and the buyer's behaviors. I try to put myself in the shoes of a potential buyer and understand from their perspective what they want and why and what they are ready and willing to pay for. You see, the better you know the ideal buyer in your market and once you can really understand what they want, you can quickly identify good deals. And what I love about real estate is in a lot of cases, if you look at enough data and enough information is available, it's very scientific. The data doesn't lie. You can find and see the trends in human behavior. That means using logic, you can predict with a certain level of certainty what will happen. Now this allows you to take distressed properties and understand their potential future value. Now I'm not gonna dismiss the art of real estate. There have been a lot of times where I did not have supporting data and I went completely off of a gut feeling and I did a deal. For example, I recently did a high-end deal that I sold on the first day with multiple offers for $1.5 million. When I went into the deal, there were no comps in the neighborhood anywhere near 1.5 million. All of the homes were selling for 800,000, but my gut was telling me that there weren't any totally renovated homes for sale anywhere in that entire market, and my gut was telling me that if I put out a like new construction, totally renovated and updated home, it would sell fast and for top dollar, and I was right. That was a big risk because I didn't have any data to support that decision. In that example, I won big, but there have been other times where I didn't have supporting data and I did a deal and I was wrong and lost. And that's part of the game as well. But on this video, I wanna help you get better at the science of real estate. And the best way to ensure that you do winning deals is to first make sure you're in a winning area. That means an area that has plenty of supporting data that flipping is a good strategy and that there is a strong demand from buyers for renovated homes. And keep in mind, what I'm sharing applies to wholesalers as well because wholesalers sell to fix and flippers who sell to homeowners. What prompted this video is today while looking at leads inside my Flipster deal management system, I came across a lead in a neighborhood in Indianapolis, which I thought was a great case study for a prime neighborhood to wholesale and flip houses, which I'll show you in a minute. But first, if you've never heard of Flipster, it's a cloud-based, all-inclusive platform to help you organize, streamline, and automate all of the steps to wholesaling and flipping houses. And Flipster comes with over a dozen different lead generation tools. In fact, with Flipster, leads is the last of your worries. Converting those leads into deals is the name of the game, and Flipster has tools to help you do that as well. Now to learn more and see it in action, just go to getflipster.com. So I was looking at this particular neighborhood called Rivoli Park in the 46201 zip code in Indianapolis, and what caught my attention was this house right here on LaSalle Street. Now, two things caught my attention. First, it came out for sale on May 29th, and it went pending immediately on June 1st, which was yesterday at the time of this recording. So immediately a buyer grabbed this house. Now the second thing that caught my attention was that it's a fix and flip. Now I knew instantly from the exterior picture and a closer look at the interior pictures showed everything has been renovated and updated and the write-up in the description as well confirms it's a flip. And this flipper seems like he knew what he was doing. Take a look at the price history. The flipper bought it January 10th for 35,000, did a full rehab and had it back up for sale four months later. So the question is, and the focus of this video is, is this a good neighborhood to wholesale and flip? Well, based on just this one situation, the answer is a definite yes. 
Remember, it went pending in one day, but one comp doesn't prove anything. Let's see if we can see a trend. Now, by the way, this analysis I'm using is on redfin.com, but you can do the same thing on Zillow. I'm gonna change the filter to just look at sold homes in the past 12 months, and then I'm gonna click on the price in the list here, and I'm gonna sort the list from highest price to lowest price. Next, let's quickly look through the pictures on the highest price solds and see if we can identify if flipping is happening in this neighborhood. Now, to identify a flip, we look for three things. One, is it updated and newly renovated? Two, is it vacant, so no sign of homeowner living there? And three, which is optional, is, is it staged? So let's quickly look at our top selling comps. Let's start with the highest sold home here on Parker. Now this house is huge at almost 3,500 square feet and it sold for 225,000 and take a look at the pictures. This was an all out rehab. It's vacant, it's completely updated and staged and take a look at the history. This flipper bought it for 48,000, rehabbed it and then listed it for 224,900 on August 1 and it went pending on August 2nd and it closed a month later for 224,900. So the buyer paid full price. So next, let's look at the next highest sold home. Uh, that was this house on Oakland that sold for 189,000. This was also a flip. You can see it's vacant and totally renovated. And if we look at the price history, you can see this flipper bought it for 34,000, rehabbed it and four months later, listed it for 189.9 and sold it for 189.9. Another full price offer. Let's go to the next most expensive home that sold on Rural Street. And as you can see, this is another fix and flip. Now they were going for a more hipster look here, don't you think? And did it work? Well, looking at the price history, this flipper bought this house for 32.5. They rehabbed it and relisted it for 175,000. And guess what? It sold for full price for 175. Now the fourth most expensive comp was another house on Rural Street. And this house is actually new construction. So they didn't do any staging, but if we take a look at the price history, it doesn't show what they bought the lot for, which I'd love to know, but they listed the home for 160 and immediately sold it for full price as well. Okay, the fifth highest sold home is on Oxford Street. This was also a flip and it also sold right away for full price. The sixth highest sold home was another flip on Rural Street and looking at the price history, it was purchased for 32,000 and it took this rehabber a year but once he put it up for sale for $149.9, it went pending in a day and it sold for full price. The seventh highest sold home was also a fix and flip. This flipper bought it for $45,000 and turned it quick in almost two and a half months. And just like the others, listed it for $140 and got a full price offer. So, so far the top seven highest sold homes in this neighborhood were all fix and flips and every one of them sold immediately for full price. Now I'm not gonna keep going, but like the next five sold homes are all fix and flips. So clearly this neighborhood is hot and clearly flipping is a thing in this neighborhood. That means as a fix and flipper, buyers want newly renovated homes. And if you're a wholesaler, fix and flippers want good deals to fix and flip. So this is without a doubt a great area to wholesale and flip houses. Now to take this exercise even further, study what flippers are doing. Pay attention to their finishes. What kind of kitchens are they putting in? Are they including appliances? Are they doing wood floors in all the rooms? What kind of countertops are they doing? Should you do staging? How many bathrooms do I need to sell for top dollar? Are they finishing the basements and so on? The way to learn a market is to study what other flippers are doing. That is how you become a market expert. So if you were to do this exercise in your market and not find any fix and flips, then you don't know with any certainty that flipping works or to what level the rehab is required by buyers because you don't have any supporting data. Now it may work, but you'd have to be the first one to find out. When it comes to fix and flip, I usually don't wanna be the first to market. Instead, I'd rather find a market that other flippers have already proven and then beat them at their own game. In other words, do it better than they do it. Now, aside from looking at the back end at what newly renovated homes are selling for, and after making sure that there is demand for renovated homes, also look at the front end of distressed inventory. In other words, can I find leads to acquire that can be fix and flipped or wholesale to fix and flippers? In the indie neighborhood, flippers were typically buying those distressed bungalow style homes in the 30,000 price range. Now that neighborhood not only has plenty of data proving that fix and flip works, but take a look at the bottom sold comps. 
I'm talking about the lowest price sold homes. You can see that there is also a healthy supply of distressed inventory for sale on market in this neighborhood. So if there were no sold distress comps, that would mean it would be more difficult to find deals, but that's not the case here. So to recap, find neighborhoods that have both a strong demand for renovated homes and ideally a healthy supply of distressed inventory. Now, if this indie neighborhood were a market I wanted to target, I would blitz this area hard with marketing. Using Flipster, I would go after multiple lead types. I'd use tools such as text blasting and ringless voicemail. If I had the budget, I'd cold call private sellers and I'd do direct mail. I'd call and double dip with every agent who has a distressed listing. I would hit this market with everything I've got. In fact, I did a video where I break down in detail my proven step-by-step -step blueprint for marketing to motivated sellers. And I'll put the link to that video in the description below and you can watch it later. If you follow that plan, you'll 10X your wholesaling business, especially if you're in the right area, like I explained in this video. Once you've identified a good area to wholesale and flip, and once you've set up a marketing campaign to find leads, the next step is to get good at running the formula and getting to your buy price or your offer price. Now this is where understanding what other flippers are doing is so helpful. The question I always ask is, how extensive are they rehabbing? How much are they spending on their rehabs? Are they doing a light carpet paint rehab? Are they doing a cosmetic flip with new kitchens and baths? Or are they doing an extensive heavy rehab with new floor plans and moving walls and full blown gut and start over rehabs? You need to know what kind of rehabs are needed so you can budget accordingly when you run the numbers. Now fortunately, you don't need to be an expert on remodel costs to figure that out. I developed a simple algorithm that calculates the rehab costs quickly and efficiently. So be sure to watch this next video where I show you how to calculate the repairs on any house in less than 60 seconds. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. With over 500 videos, this is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping. Do that now and I'll see you on the next video.